Music theory can seem very scary for a jazz beginner and you will come across people insisting that it's bad for your creativity. But in reality, it's a great help when it comes to learning jazz and it helps you speed up the learning process. Imagine a guitarist who doesn't know theory. He's stuck and can't turn the licks that he learned into new vocabulary. He doesn't have a way to learn and organize the notes on the fretboard and he can't use the songs that he know to easily learn more songs. Learning jazz becomes very difficult like that. So there are a lot of advantages to learning just a bit of basic theory. You want to learn to think in keys. You can compare this to learning about how a car is constructed. If you think of words like battery, air filter and wheels, then the word itself is not really saying a lot. But if you think of them as parts of a car, then you have a much better idea about what they are and what they do. D minor seven is one thing in B flat major and something completely different in C major. And it's also going to sound completely different. Just like the battery in your car is probably different from the one in your mobile phone. The context helps you understand. When you're working on learning a song like a jazz standard, then you probably want it to end up sounding like this. But in reality, you're looking at the lead sheet and it seems like there are thousands of incomprehensible chords and the whole thing is impossible to understand. The first thing you want to do is to stop thinking of each chord as an isolated thing and use that the song is in a key where you know the diatonic chords because that's a huge part of knowing the key and also something you can easily practice for both major and minor scales. If you look at the song knowing what key it's in, then you can immediately recognize the chords that are in the key and diatonic to the scale, which already will help you deal with most of the song. But you can also realize that chord progressions have direction and move to a resolution. And this helps you understand what is going on and makes it easier to solo over the song. Now, as you get more experienced, it will also help you deal with the chords that are in the key and have a function, but are not in the scale. Something that becomes unnecessarily confusing and complicated if you start looking at them as not connected to the key or the song when your ear tells you that they definitely are. This section was about understanding a whole song, but the next trick is just as useful and also leads to a very helpful Barry Harris concept. Imagine that you have to read a page in a book, but instead of reading the words and sentences, then you spell each word on the page. Now I'm sure you can imagine how slow that process is and how it is also getting in the way of understanding what is actually written on that page. The same is true for chords. You don't want to get stuck trying to learn songs by memorizing long rows of abstract letters and numbers when it is much faster to read the chord progressions as chunks in the same way that you read words. The most basic building blocks that you want to start with are the major and minor 251 and recognizing different types of turnarounds is probably the next place to go. You want to start by ignoring extensions and just get used to reading chords as the basic type of chord that they are. So G7 with a nine and a 13 is just a G7. D minor seven at 11 is just a D minor seven and C major seven with a nine is also just a C major seven chord. The extensions are not that important in this case and you'll anyway be interpreting the chord symbols and ignoring them most of the time. Once you start thinking in groups of chords or smaller chord progressions, then you can also open up how you improvise over them. And simplifying the chords is a great way to not get overwhelmed and to make it easier to improvise more melodic solos. Later in the video, I'm gonna talk about simplifying chords in a different but equally powerful way. But let's start with Barry Harris. The main way that Barry Harris reduces chord progressions is by taking away the two chord in a two, five, one. For a song, that means that you have to think a lot less because you would think this, which makes it a lot fewer chords and soloing over it will still make sense. Another very practical way to reinterpret a common chord progression that you'll see with Barry Harris is to reduce a turnaround to a one and a five chord. Now the previous concept explains taking away the two chord in the two, five, and that kind of also makes it easy to ignore the dominant in the second half of bar one because there's really no point in it anymore and is anyway on the weak part of the bar. As an example, check out how this gives you a much easier way to approach rhythm changes. Just using five chords and tonic chords instead of two chords per bar, you get a much simpler progression that is a lot easier to solo over. The most efficient thing that you can do is probably to practice something once and then be able to use it in a lot of places. Now, if we start with a C major scale and a C major seven chord, then you'll have these notes. But for comping, you can also use the chord that is a diatonic third above C, E minor seven, which essentially gives you a C major seven with a nine 
And another option is the chord that is a diatonic third below, which is A minor 7, and that gives you the sound of a C6 chord. So if the song says C major 7, then you have three times as many voicings to choose from. Check out how it sounds and a bonus chromatic trick with this 2, 5, 1 and C. That was the C major 7, but you can also use the A minor 7. And the next one goes to E minor 7, but then uses some chromatic voice leading to transition to the A minor 7. This doesn't work for every chord in every chord progression, but it is well worth exploring. And if you're practicing diatonic arpeggios, which you should be doing since it is the most important scale exercise in jazz, then it's also useful for solos because like the voicings, you have three arpeggios that you can use over a C major seven. Just the basic C major seven arpeggio. And of course the E minor seven. And you can also use A minor seven. As you can hear, this is incredibly powerful and it's all over famous bebop solos from people like Parker, George Benson and Joe Pass. You should check out how they work with this if you get the chance. It's gonna teach you a lot. You want to understand and hear chords in categories, similar to how you might order a shopping list. If you go shopping, then you make a list with the items that you need, grouped in categories by what is close to each other in the store. And that means that you will have groups like vegetables, bread, dairy, meat, and categorizing chords like this by how they sound and how they behave in the song can be a massive time saver. There is a good chance that you already do this a bit with diminished chords, recognizing that C major seven, C sharp diminished, D minor seven can be considered the same chord progression as C major seven, A seven to D minor seven. And therefore you can solo using the same vocabulary. But that concept actually goes a lot further. Let me show you an example with subdominant and tonic chords. Here you have subdominant, minor subdominant, resolving to a tonic. And that is also what you have in this progression. In these examples, D minor seven and F major seven are interchangeable and both are subdominant chords. And even if B flat seven and D flat major seven don't contain exactly the same notes, then they sound very similar. They kind of voice lead in the same way. And in the context, they're both minor subdominant chords. You can even easily create vocabulary that works on both progressions. The main categories that you want to think of are tonic, subdominant and dominant. And then there are common subcategories like minor subdominance and sharp four subdominance. I'm showing this with chords in these groups, but keep in mind that chords have different functions depending on what is happening around them. I'll show you an example of that in a bit. So be careful with just thinking from an overview like this. Functions go a bit further than Barry's short chord and tie into understanding chords in the context that they're in. In a 2 5 one like D minor seven to G seven to C major seven, then the two chord often makes sense as a part of the dominant that is resolving to the tonic chord. But if it's two flat seven to one, so D minor seven to B flat seven to C major seven, then this is a subdominant moving to the tonic using a minor subdominant as a transition chord. It's a way to think about the chords that connects a lot better with the music and really fits how it sounds a lot better. Of course, when you're working on chords, then you also need to be able to get them to sound great when you're comping. And there are some great exercises that will help you do exactly that, which you can check out in this video so that you can level up your chord playing and your comping. Check it out. Learn jazz, make music.